Good afternoon, YouTube. I hope a lot of people will get to see this video. Today, I noticed that the Yamaha website updated, allowing us to submit a request to have our boards upgraded to fix the HDMI 2.1 bug. Previously, this website was just a landing page, giving us information on what the bug was and how to get around it. Really quick, these receivers were marketed to pass through 4K 120Hz signals or 8K 60B. And when people first bought their Xbox Series X or NVIDIA RTX 30 series, they found out that that was not the case. They were limited to just 60 hertz at 4K. It's been a year since I bought this receiver for my home theater. And at the time I was just building out the room, so I didn't really care. I have the TSR 700 from Costco and I got it for around $300 even before the bug came out. Or was known so i didn't have too many complaints about it there were some concerns by many owners not knowing what yamaha was going to do once they found out that the chip inside the receiver could not be upgraded via firmware but the whole chip had to be replaced itself long story short it was a shortcoming by many different parties people who were making the xbox x didn't know what chip or the specifications just didn't line up with what the receiver, those companies, chip makers were expecting. And it was just a, a whole mess. So not sure what happened there. But here's the process. I'm going to link the website below. But that landing page now redirects you to a login. Previously, they asked you to register your product. So they would email you when the update was available. I never got an email. I just happened to have this website <laughs> loaded and saved. And I just checked it every so often. Once you log in, they're gonna ask you for your model number and serial. The serial number can be found on the back of the receiver and this is kind of a pain in the butt because on mine, I have what, eight or nine speaker wires connected to it. So it's kind of hard to pull out the shelf. You're then gonna wait for an email from United Radio. It appears they have been contracted out to do these repairs. They're gonna have you confirm the board firmware version. I'm gonna show you how to do that here. You're just gonna check your receiver, turn it on, Go to the settings, look for the firmware, and next to the version, if you don't see the star or asterisk, that means that you do not have the updated board. Apparently, the later models of this unit were shipped with the replacement board, so that's something you definitely want to check out so you don't waste time. After you fill out the form, they ask you if you need a shipping box and packaging materials, which I opted for because I don't have any boxes that large lying around the house, and the last thing I need is for it to get damaged when I'm sending it back. I highly suggest you do it soon. The estimated time is seven to 10 business days, but given the flood of requests, I'm sure it's gonna take a lot longer, especially with the holidays coming up. And that's it. You just gotta wait for the confirmation email and you should be good to go. For those who want a little bit more information on how we've been dealing with this, I have a PS5. What I currently do is I connect the console directly to the TV, just using a normal HDMI 2.1 cable. The TV has an eARC HDMI slot on number three. So I have another cable running from the TV back to the receiver, the receiver's eARC port. Here on the television, you can see that I do have 120 Hertz supported. I'm then gonna show you the HDMI bug that people have been talking about. This is when you connect the console directly to the receiver. On this receiver, ports one through three are HDMI 2.1. They're the one that were supposed to pass through the 4K 120 Hertz signals. But when you look at the TV, it only goes up to 60 Hertz. And just to clarify, this TV does support 120 Hertz. Final thoughts. I highly suggest you guys jump on this soon. And I recommend that you do it even if you don't want to. One of my gripes is that Yamaha on the website, they're kind of pushing that if you don't have an Xbox or a RTX 30 series, you don't need to do it. I kind of disagree. Um, this product was marketed as having this HDMI 2.1 capability. And if you're talking about future proofing, that's a pretty big selling point for a lot of people. The only drawback that might prevent you from doing this is of course you have to send your receiver back. But for me, since I've had it for a year, that new product face is kind of worn off already. So I don't mind parting ways with it for a couple of weeks or even a month. But yeah, again, you're just not getting what you paid for. So I, Highly suggest that if you can, you send it back in, it's free. And more importantly, this program, from what I saw on that landing page, I believe this program is only good for a year. So once that year passes, they might decide to just revoke it 
And then at that point, you're kind of SOL. If you reach out to them, they might just tell you to either buy a new receiver or, you know, you're on your own. And again, to clarify, I signed up for the Yamaha account, but I never got an email telling me that they were starting to do these board upgrades. So hopefully, again, a lot of people will find this video and jump on it soon. If you learned something from this video today or it helped you out in any way, please like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. See you next time.